Las Vegas was in the distant future. Yep. It's here now. Yep. Um, yeah. And you're moving. You're moving a football team from right. you know one state to another. Yep. Uh, have you talked to anybody about that process? It's happened recently uh, for a couple of teams. Have you reached out to anyone about that? In all honesty, I haven't. And, and the main reason is that I'm involved with some of it, not all of it. Um, a lot of the delicate employee relocations and all that's that's HR and some of the, you know and I have to deal with some of that but not much and and the reality is the football operation side of it that I'm worried about I think we have a pretty good plan I think we talked about last year when I first got here I think John and I are mostly on board um, I think we're trying to do a mini camp John mentioned that uh, and, and really the purpose of that is to try and get the players and coaches invested in a new building and the only way we're going to do it is if the building's ready. Yeah. We don't know if the building will be ready for that, but we want to make sure the showers are on, we can watch film, you know, everything's ready to go so that it when we get back from a training camp in Napa, that all of a sudden we get into a new building and nobody's seen it. Right. I don't really want the players walking around like this, wow, this is cool, right. while we're trying to get ready for week one. You know, I want to get all the shock and all out of there, get them used to it, know where their meeting rooms are, where everything is in the building, and when we get back from training camp, let's go to work. Are you confident that it's not going to be a distraction to the point where it becomes an excuse or anything like that? What, the new Just building the or the... everything? You, know, uh, yeah. there, you can't have an excuse. I mean, in, in all honesty, you could sit there and say our travel last year was an excuse, and we can't even use that. I right. mean, that was an awful schedule, right? right? But but we had, we had to deal with it. And uh, hopefully we'll have as much advanced work that's going into this, that it'll, it'll be seamless for the football people. I'm not saying it's going to be seamless for everybody, but the most important priority is making sure that when we set up there after camp, we're ready, and hopefully we'll have a couple preseason games at home to finish up the preseason, get that stadium rolling, make sure we're good in our building so that when week one happens, it's just an afterthought. We're, we're moving. You touched on it a little, uh, during your press conference. You talked about the route running trees and how wide receivers in college just look to their coaches for the, their assignments and what they're going to run. Have you felt like this class in particular is better in terms of knowing the route trees, or do you feel like they're equally just at fault for relying on their coaches too much? Well, I, I, I never want to indict college football, okay? And that's what they do. And so these kids, you don't know whether – they're looking over, one coach signals them every play. Some teams do that, some teams do it other plays. But for the most part, they're not used to getting in the huddle and have Derek Carr give them 12 seconds of verbiage and then have to go to the line of scrimmage. You're processing all the verbiage. Now you look up, you get your pre-snap read, and now post-snap, all of a sudden, the changes, the safety rocks, and instead of being number three on the back side, you're number one on the front side, like I said over there, right? Bottom line is you got to process a lot of stuff you never had to do in your life. So whatever program you came out of, you still have to learn it. I think the trick, the challenge, is to figure out which of these kids will be able to process more quickly. What's their mental acuity? Can we put them up on a board and watch them put something together, sit them down half an hour later, come back and, and check on the verbiage? Do you remember the Raider verbiage? Do you remember your verbiage? So it's really kind of identifying which kids we think in seven rounds of the draft will be able to step in, and I'm most nervous about, if you're going to draft a wide out anywhere, can we get first-year production out of that guy? Because if you look at the numbers, it's not real good. I got to talk to C.D. Lamb and I asked him you know, whether he feels comfortable knowing the X, Y, and Z position. Yeah. How, like you said, John yeah. expects that of his yeah. receivers. Not that I want you or expect you to tip your hand at all, but what do you see between C.D. Lamb and guys like Jerry Jimmy? Look, every receiver is going to tell you he can learn all three of course. positions. They already have. Yeah. You know, and... and Again, the challenge is trying to figure out which ones. And, you know, there, there's there may, a whole bunch of different flavors at the top of the draft. You know, Jerry Drew, Judy is one type of receiver. CeeDee Lamb is a different type of receiver. Henry Ruggs is a third kind of receiver. And you can go all the way down. And I think the cool thing, if you're a team in need of wide receivers, and let's face it, we are, okay, there's quality at the top and there's depth, depth throughout. And I think that's what you're looking for. For those top receivers, how much does the 40 times matter this week for those top guys you mentioned? Is it a big deal or not? You know what it is for me, Vic, and I've always said this, is fast guys run fast, slow guys run slow. It's only a story if the opposite occurs. So if I think, pick, a, pick an example, if I think Jerry Judy's going to run 4-4-2 and he runs 4-5-8, we get, i got to go back and check the tape and see if it's my eye or if he's just not a functional guy on the field or is a 40-yard dash guy. And there's differences, right? Uh, and it works the other way, too. I could have a guy at 4.55, five, and he runs 4.35. Five. 
now I got to go back to the tape and figure out am I wrong or did he just learn how to run a 40 because he learned how to start quicker, right? So really it's a cross check. Speed's important though. Let's, let's, you know, in today's age, in today's world, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, you're looking for dynamic, fast guys. Mike, we're talking about the draft right now, but there's a whole leg of the offseason process yeah. in free agency. Uh, are you getting a sense of where that might go for you guys, and, and how much do you think that that could affect what's going to happen in the draft? As, well? as far as what, the free agency? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I think I have to give some credit to some people before I got here. For instance, you know, Gruden took all the pain of, of trading Cooper and Mac, and, and, you know, I walk in, we got all these draft picks. Tom Delaney does a great job with salary caps. We have some salary cap space. So I think we're sitting here. We had a pretty good draft last year. Uh, we feel a little better about where we are this year than we did a year ago. Um, the challenge is we need another great draft. Um, and then we've got to make intelligent decisions in free agency. We do have some money. I've always said free agency is a buyer beware market. For the, for the most part, there are reasons guys are in free agency. And you, you better be surgical and you, and you better be smart. And uh, I think that's really the challenge. You talked about the defense. I mean, you set it up there. You know, you really have to improve across the yep. board. Yep. What is your vision for the Raiders' defense? What does it look like in your mind? I, I think any, any, I think any GM or coach would pretty much say you want a big, strong, long, fast, violent, pursuing defense. And that's easy to say because all 32 of us would say that. And that is our vision. We got to get bigger. We got to get longer. We get faster. Really, what we got to get is more dynamic. Okay, we didn't make many plays on defense. We didn't turn the football over on defense. And I could sit here and, and go into a hundred things, but we need to get better at all three levels in all eleven positions. And on one hand, that kind of helps because both in the draft and free agency, we need help everywhere. So we don't have to be real surgical on defense. We just need help everywhere. And we're going to be looking for dynamic guys, both in the draft and free agency, that can help us day one. Before that, what is Jordan Love? What's, what's intriguing about this guy? Kind of the, the prototype, typical kind of quarterback in the NFL today. Is that kind of what impresses you about that kid? And he's a big, strong kid. He's got a big arm. He's athletic. Um, you could, I mean, he was a basketball player. You can see that in his movement skills. Uh, I think so. The upside of the kid is really cool. I think the, the caution or the downside can be uh, he had a good junior year, or 2018, I should say. His senior year wasn't as good. He throws a lot of interceptions. He's very raw when it comes to what he's getting from the sideline. He's reading off his wrist card. You know, so like a lot of college players, he's got a long way to go. And you've got to factor that into what his ultimate value is. Before last year, you didn't want to see more out of Hurst and, and Hall. Did yeah. you see more? Is that still kind of the area of move for you guys up front? Yeah, I, I, again, I think all 11 positions are. I, I think... Ideally, what Mo should be is, is probably a sub three technique. He, he does a nice job uh, against, against the pass. He's not as big a defensive tackle in the run game. Uh, I'd like to use him in a certain way, and I think we can. Um, and PJ's got a challenge. You know, we got a new defensive line coach coming in, and, and trust me, Rod Marinelli doesn't put up with anything but 100% hustle. Nothing but. So I think all of the defensive linemen are going to have a challenge this year, every single one of them. What does Bill and Farrell have to do to take sort of next step, year one, year two? I think, first of all, um, we've got to do a better job with him, meaning, you know, we asked him to kick inside early. I think that slowed him down. He got sick. I think that slowed him down. I'd like to keep him in one place uh, and, and continue to work with who he is as a pass rusher. Uh, Rod Marinelli is going to demand some things. He's going to get him up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think you're going to see better footwork and handwork. He already works his tail off. He's a perfectionist, and he wants to be taught. So uh, I think what you're going to see is – Sometimes we've got two def young defensive ends that are almost complete opposites. You know, it's really kind of cool. You know, Max gets in there and doesn't have a whole lot of technique, but he's got natural ability to bend. He's got a natural ability to run, and he just goes. He doesn't worry too much about which gap he should be in. or it, He just goes. And, and Klee, on the other hand, is such a perfectionist. He wants to do everything right. And I think sometimes, like I talked about with the wideouts, Sometimes he's thinking too much. So we want to get Clay to the point where everything is just a reaction and he's going. And I think once we get that with his length, size, and athletic ability, he'll be fine. You were at the um, Senior Bowl and you're talking about playmakers defensively. There was yeah. a Division three kid, Kyle Duggar, I think his last yeah, name is. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you see from him there at the Senior Bowl? What I, what I kind of look for for the small school kids at Senior Bowl is I get a kick out of looking in, in the huddle. Like, you see Lenore Ryan 
standing next to LSU and Alabama. Right. And it's less about what they're doing on the field and more about whether it's too big for them. We can see athletic ability talent, right? Is it too big for you? Remember several years ago, the kid that went, uh, I think, in the second round of Tampa Bay, the Division Three offensive lineman from Hobart. Right, um, right. I'm forgetting his name right now, but he was from Hobart. And he started just about every game for Tampa Bay since then. And for me, it started at the Senior Bowl. It wasn't too big for him, right? They, they had a Division Three offensive lineman this year, Barch. Right. Wasn't too big for him. Kid from Lenore Ryan, Doug Duggar, Duger, wasn't too big for him. So that's the beginning of it. Now we got to dig in on it a little bit. I need two more guys. Uh, uh, Jonathan Abram. Yeah. Uh, getting it, what, how's his status? Getting him back? What's, what's that going to do? <laughs> Love Jonathan. I, I don't think a day goes by where I don't get five texts telling me what he's doing, why he's doing it, how he's doing it. Uh, he's just about 100% clear at this point. Uh, so he'll be going without any limitations once we get in the off-season program. And, you know, I... Once we get John away from all his personal engagements and, and, and all the things he's doing on television and radio and, and back to some football, I think he's got a chance. If he has his head on tight and screwed on correctly, he's got a chance to be a premier player in the league. The position that you've taken, uh, exploring all possibilities for all positions, including quarterback. Yeah. Um, other teams might look at that as, hey, maybe we should call the Raiders about you know, Derek Carr. Would you be surprised if that happened? And Is that part of something that you would even entertain? I, I, I can't speak for anybody else. I, I know if I have a question about a player on another team, I pick the phone up and call the GM. I don't really know what's going to happen there. Um, we're not looking to actively move him at all. Okay, We know what we have and we appreciate it. Mike, what will that new stadium, the new football facility, what will that just do for the, for the organization? Do you think, and, and, and no state taxes and all that stuff? Well, I, I think there's going to be an energy about the Raiders. Now, having said that, I loved Oakland Alameda Coliseum, or whatever it's called. I loved it. Okay, there's an energy in that building. Now we're expecting to get to Vegas and have an even a greater energy because of the promise of what's there. You know, and, and I'm hoping that, you know, we've got 65,000 maniacs week one that just can't wait to see the Vegas Raiders play. Um, there's going to be an energy, I think, about the team. I think players around the league have a recognition that John Gruden is an energetic guy. We're going to a new city. We've got a new facility, a new building. There's no state tax. There's some energy around the franchise. And what we need to do to make sure it continues is we got to win. So we can talk about all that other crap all we want, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to winning football games to continue that energy. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, thank Thanks for everybody. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks.